Okay, now it's in foliage. Just got okay. myself off uh, at uni and I'm just driving around the other car. My partner's not well today, so home sick, so I might I might actually have this car for a while. And um, I might try and go out to the wet wall if I can. I've got, got to pick myself up from uni at um, four o'clock. But yeah, I'm just filling out here because it uh, used to be some, um, when my son was, I was taking him around here you know, to kindy and to the little playground back there when he was young. You know, this is like the late 90s when he's like yeah, four, five, and six, I think, you know. Uh, it used to be, so I'm just going to quickly just pull over here and have a bit of a squeeze, you know. It might be better to actually park up here on that. Park up here. And uh, yeah. yeah. Automatic automatic windows in this one. <laughs> okay. And uh, <clears throat> see how we go. Oh, you like the go from the from the car to the bush or thing. And, uh, okay, I'll sort of walk over here as you do. <laughs> you see the um, still dampish, but it's drying out, sort of thing. You know. You know, I was going to actually film all the way in, but you know it goes past that little play playground down there where my, my used to, you know, my son used to go there, and you know I sit there either reading the paper or something. And, um, yeah. See that one's almost fluorescent. That one. Almost a pure coloured one. And see, everyone is usually different, and you, oh, all the daisies are out, so that means that they'll be out at Kuiper as well, probably. So. Uh, you can imagine that footage from last year when I took a look. That's probably what it's like there today at Kaipo. But of course it won't be quite as sunny or as hot as it was last year at that time. And a uh, set of pylons going down the middle. <laughs> Very reminiscent sort of the middle of the um, Canton Swamp uh, Double 100. You know, 100 parcel land power lines down the middle and another parcel 100, you know, acres, you know. That's acres. I think, yeah, I guess, yes. Old, old, uh, in the old money. But yeah, somewhere down here, there used to be, um, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised that this corridor is probably, uh, something equivalent to something like that, you know, like it's remnant, this, this, big long straight patch of land it's probably a remnant piece of land due to something like a, a 100 or something you know uh, out here um, it seems to be the way things were done <laughs> everything was gridded off in parcels 100 or something and, you know once they got all the uh, water water courses and everything all surveyed out you know so uh, yeah, there used to be some, as you can see the soils down there, going from that brown into the grey, so it's sort of podzolarising. But uh, as from the jar, we're, getting, we're learning a lot more, so, you know, getting the impression that hydration is a really important point, and you can work backwards from that. You can say, well, if you've got something that has to stay at least wet for two months to between two and four months you could probably grid the whole world out that way and say well you know CPs are probably only going to grow reasonable in areas where the soil stays damp for at least two to four months every season if it has like even the Mediterranean climate or something like that you could probably quickly rule yeah you know, get your pencil out and like on the back of a process dam just sort of grid off the world that way and say well you know the only places where I would think good CPs would grow would be in areas of the world where the soil at least stays uh, wet for at least two months 
you know, constantly damp on the surface of the soil, you know, heading that the way up to saturation for at least two months to four months of the year, so I think. And you're probably not going get, to get, get good CPs. And that's, that's, that's amazing you can actually do that sort of exaggerated, you know, extrapolation from just simple basic jar work like that. Um, but that's the power of science in a way, isn't it? You can make that sort of generalised warning. Well, if it has to be hydrated for the soil to um, do its thing, or, you know, in other words, for it to be able to fix nitrogen from the atmosphere, um, to get up to the lovely nitrogen levels for the plants to grow really well, and also to be somewhat sterile, so you've got, you know, these sort of pseudo-sterile soils with high nitrogen, because after two to four months of fixing nitrogen from the atmosphere but only if they're and you can back step from that to say well that's probably what the double flush was all about now i can't see anything fellas but you know it's been when i was chugging my uh, son around on this little push thing with the the broom and all that stuff and you know taking him to kindy and all that sort of thing um that's nearly 20 years ago now you know that was from Born in 95, we're now in 2014, it's almost getting to that 20 years ago. And I haven't really explored this area since then really well. I've got a few VHS, a couple of VHS I think, uh, filmings from out here. Back then of the plants actually growing out here. Um, you know, from the early 2000s, like, like nearly 15 years ago or whatever. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'd have to find the exact spot where they used to grow and see if they've been, not been poisoned or, you know, mown over on a regular basis and to such an extent that the tubers got smaller and smaller and smaller and... <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Anyway, it was a nice try. Well, that's a different one. Well, there's a different one. They're all different, as I said. Uh. I'm on uh, night scene foliage normal. So you got all this uh, stuff here, but uh, this one's lovely. This is one we've got the good scent. No, this is a scentless one. <laughs> so, so anyway, so um, this is going back to that point. Maybe that's what the double flush was all about. First of all, the first flush gets, you know, keeps, by doing it on a double flush every day, you're basically keeping the soil to a certain wetness. But the following day, the water that's sat there, and, and assuming it's probably fixed nitrogen from the atmosphere, has then been flushed down to the, the nether regions of the pot sort of thing. So, uh, that nitrogen is constantly going down into the, the root zone of the plant. So whether there's some sort of interaction between the microorganisms down there and maybe microbiology on the roots or just the roots absorbing it so they're getting like that a pulsated nitrogen fix every day you do the double flush sort of thing i think that's how it works but i think you have to do the double flush one to make it so it's just to a certain extent saturated so that the the, the nitrogen fixation reaction can occur and secondly, to push that fixed nitrogen material down to the root zone, sort of thing. So, because uh, obviously the roots don't grow to the surface looking for the nitrogen. So, uh, otherwise, it would be a common thing in CP pots to see roots festooning the surface of the soil. It would have been a, a big giveaway, I would have thought, but that doesn't seem to occur. So, anyway, that's enough for this clip and. Uh, I'll dump this onto the computer and then probably wipe this card and go out to uh, hopefully the wet wall if I've got time. I've just got to do a little bit of shopping first. You know, get the, the odd uh, litre of milk and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this little clip. It's probably a bit longer than the usual ones, but it's just a single clip. It may be important once I get to hopefully get the footage from the lockup. We can get down to finding some of those clips from out along this way from years ago.
You may even see my son in them. <laughs> I don't know. But they're so long ago now. Anyway, I suppose it's uh, over and out. I suppose we could uh, do a little bit of a dry. Just finish off the clip out here. Oh, out of that window, yeah, it's getting on. Oh. No, I still haven't cleaned the camera. I've got to clean it when I get out there. I, I haven't cleaned it for weeks. The amount of smeg on this camera then. Oh. Maybe it's maybe just Abbott Land's getting that way. People just don't bloody care. Well, I used, would use the F word in the land of the F word, but anyway. So we'll see how we go. Oh, can't shut the camera off, I think. Some sort of weird car down there. You never know. Okay, over and out. Yep.